Okay, I've written this last problem on the back of the answer sheet just because it takes a little bit of room. So you probably want to do the same thing if you haven't already done it. So go ahead and shut off the video camera if you need to and recopy it onto the back of your packet. Okay, so this last one is one you actually saw in chapter four. About uh, it was a projectile in chapter four, I think, and this one it is. Uh, it seems like it's a rocket, maybe. But same kind of thing, projectile, rocket. They have the same kind of trajectory. Anytime you throw something, throw a football up, hit a golf ball, the basic trajectory is going to be a parabola. And whoops, I don't know. I'm in such a habit of putting um, arrows on. So this is it. the ground. You hit the golf ball or shoot off a rocket and then it comes back down. Not surprising that the negative is in front telling us the parabola's upside down because if we're throwing something, that's what it's going to be is an upside down parabola. Um, a parabola that's flipped across the x-axis, they call it a reflection. So they want to know when's the rocket going to be back down here. So at zero seconds it's on the ground, you throw it back up, and we learned in part A and B above that at 15 seconds it's going to be at its highest point. So because it's something thrown it's not going to be exactly symmetric, but I can guess that it's going to be back down on the ground in about 30 seconds if it's at its highest at 15. Doesn't that make sense? So in my head, I'm already going, well, the answer that makes the most sense is somewhere around 30 seconds. It won't be exact because, like I said, they're not exactly symmetric because you have gravity and all kinds of things at work. But I know in my head that if I don't get an answer around 30, then I've probably done something wrong. So the other thing you need to go into this problem knowing is that, and this was something we learned in chapter four, but it was highly missed and it was also on the chapter four quiz later. Hits the ground means height is zero because height is in feet above the ground. Well, if it's back on the ground, that means the height is zero because it's zero feet tall. So this is my height and it set it in the directions. You can go back and read. So this is what we replace with zero. Many of you did this one wrong on chapter four. You replaced all the T's with zero. Well, at time zero, it's not going to be over here. At time zero, it's right here. It hasn't been shot up yet. So once the rocket's shot into the air, we want to know how many seconds here. It has to be something bigger than 15. So you cannot put zero in for T. That means time is zero, not height is zero. And that's what we need. So the equation that we're going to be solving is zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 480 T plus 100. And one of the big hints I gave you back in chapter 4 is if the numbers are really huge, look for a GCF. And we have one here. 16 goes into that, but it doesn't go into that because 16 times 6 is 96. 8 goes into that, 8 goes into that, but 8 doesn't go into 100 because 12 times 8 is 96. So going down 4, 4, 4. So there it is. And we also learned in chapter four, when our leading coefficient is negative, we take out a negative GCF. So we're going to divide everything by negative four. And as long as you divide both sides of the equation by negative four all the way along, it just goes away. So as long as you have an equal sign, you can just divide it out. So zero divided by anything is zero. Double negative is positive 4t squared. One negative is negative 120t. And one negative is negative 25. So some of you may be going, oh, factors of 100 that subtract to 120. Don't even try it. 
Why do I know that? Right here. The minute I see round, I know this is a quadratic formula problem because when we factor, we get nice whole numbers or a nice fraction like a half. When I see directions that say round, that means don't even test it. I mean, you can if you want. Take some time. You'll see it doesn't factor. So, but that's the biggest hint. Round means go straight to the quadratic formula. You don't even need to worry about factor. So, the quadratic formula, let's go ahead and write our a equals 4. B equals negative 120, and C is negative 25. So we have our variables there ready. So now let's write the quadratic formula. So X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. So now let's plug it in and see what we get. Oh, do you see what I did here? I wrote my t here. Does everybody agree this is my x in this problem? So this should be t equals. Because if you write x, you'll go, oh, did I just find the height or did I find the time? So use t, the appropriate variable for, and you can tell that the t is the x up here as well. Because whatever's in parentheses is your input, your x value. So in this case, it's t. Okay, let's fill in for the quadratic formula and then we'll plug this into our calculator. So t equals opposite of b. So the opposite of negative 120 is positive 120 plus or minus b squared is negative 120 times negative 120. So negative 120 times negative 120 is 14,400. And we know this first value is always positive because anything squared is always positive minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 25, all over 2 times a, so 2 times 4. Okay, so just like we did in section 7, 2, when we learned this, I told you to go ahead and do this first. So get your calculator ready, 120, or get your equation ready, empty radical, all over 8. So we already have the 14,400 in the calculator. So now we can just use that and go minus 4 times 4 times negative 25. So that gives us 14,800. Okay, so you may be looking at this going, oh my goodness, so we have to break that down? No, you don't, because look at the directions. Round to the tenth. It didn't say right as a simplified radical. It says round to the tenth. So that means it's all calculator. So now we need to write our two cases. I don't know if you remember from chapter four, like I said, it was on the chapter four test, very last problem. And then I also put it on the chapter four test corrections quiz. And one answer made sense, one didn't. So let's see if that's gonna be the case here too. So case one will be 120 plus square root 14,800 all over 8, <clears throat> excuse me, and the second case will be 120 minus square root 14,800 over 8. Most people that miss this problem miss it on the next step. 
there's two terms up here and in order to get eight have eight be divided into their sum you have to hit enter at the end if you do 120 plus square root 1480 divided by 8 the only thing that gets divided by 8 is the last thing you type in so i always like to write a reminder right here to tell me oh don't forget to hit enter that way it totals up the top and then when you hit divided by 8 it's going to take the whole total divided by 8, not just the last number you typed in. And we know it's going to be a rounding problem, so let's go ahead and get our little squigglies there. And now we are ready to type it in. And you can use the first one to help you with the second one too, with the typing. Okay, let's go over a little bit more because I want you to see the whole calculator. Okay, so we're going to do 120 plus second x squared 14,800 close your parentheses and hit enter that totals up the top and then divided by 8 oh look at that good guess Miss Norris had I said it's going to be about 30 seconds boom it's 30.2 seconds. Pretty good guess, huh? So it said round to the nearest tenth. Two is in the tenths place. It's followed by zero. So that says leave it two. So 30.2 approximately. And remember this is T time in seconds. So we know that one makes sense. Now let's see if this next one makes sense. In chapter four, you had um, one that was positive and one that was negative, and you had to throw the negative one out because time can't be negative. So let's see if we get that same scenario here. So on the calculator, you don't have to type it again. I'm trying to get everything on the screen. Uh, there we go so hit your up arrow and just key over and change that to a minus so minus hit your inner and then divide it by eight so that up arrow is a handy little key so you don't have to type all that messy stuff again look at just as we predicted well, not predicted, as happened in chapter four. One answer comes out negative. We can't have negative seconds. We can do this. So that one gets crossed out. And guess what our real answer is? So 30.2 seconds is when the rocket will be back down on the ground. That one we can't use because that's negative seconds. So you're going to see that on this test. You already saw it on the chapter four test and you're going to see it again on the final and many, many times in Math 150. So really great problem to study. So now the ball's in your court. You guys need to study hard and get ready for this last test. You have a nice solid grade going into the final exam. So if you have any questions about the practice test, be sure and let me know.